initiative called the Public Sphere. <coughs> this, um, the Public Sphere project was a collaboration by myself and Pia War, my ICT advisor. Pia has a background in the open source community, so was able to bring an insight into collaborative methodologies. Uh, my own experience now in Parliament uh, for some 15 years and having, I think, way back in 96, being the first Australian parliamentarian to build my own website, I had a bit of form on taking risks and experimenting in the online medium. So the public sphere um, is a, a, a type of policy consultation with citizens, but it, it's an event that occurs over a two-month period. And it's, I'd like to describe it first, and then I'll reflect upon it. So the idea of the, the public sphere is to use social media in an applied way to have a policy conversation that's more inclusive uh, and can be captured and, and recorded and therefore become accountable and transparent uh, through the course of the conversation. Um, we designed it so it's a blend of the new technologies in social media and, and traditional consultation methods of government. We, we know how to consult with our communities, so how do we make use of social media to make that a more accountable and higher quality conversation. Um, thirdly, we wanted it to be open, accessible, um, scalable, and and I think accountable uh, as we recorded the information as we went along. And the, the fourth thing is that we had no budget. I have resources as a <coughs> Senator of the Australian Parliament, but I don't have any accounts that I can tap into. So we decided that we would use all, all the tools that were existing in the cloud we weren't able to create any or build any. And I'd just like to describe the tools that we used uh, to build the public sphere. Um, my own website, which you can see there, is a, a WordPress blog. Uh, everything on it is um, able to be commented on and responded to and engaged with. So that formed the basis of a live wall we established for the event. We use live stream, Twitter, Flickr, SlideShare, Facebook, YouTube and Vimeo, live blogging, remote nodes, Zing, wiki, a voting tool for the wiki, and ultimately some diagnostic tools, which I'll talk about. So the event went like this. Um, we consulted with a group of people uh, for our public sphere. The first one was on higher bandwidth networks and asked people online to invite a series of topics that they wanted to discuss. But most of all, uh, we needed to um, make it clear to participants that we had an outcome. And the outcome was to present a policy recommendation to the minister working on these areas. <coughs> so from the very start, the public sphere had a purpose, and that was to capture the thoughts, expertise, and ideas of a broad community who cared about higher bandwidth networks and what they would bring to our country. Many of you will know we are investing in a national broadband network, which will bring um, um, speeds of 100 megabits uh, to 93% uh, of our citizens and at least, at least 12 to the rest. So in the public sphere, um, we open up and gather input about the uh, topics that people would like to discuss. That is open for about a month, and then we ask that online community to decide who the speakers will be. Uh, we then organise a physical event, much like today, sitting around the room, listening to speakers, recording it, uh, live streaming it, asking people to use a hashtag on Twitter to comment, have live blogging, and running it on a live wall. Um, through the course of the day, we ask people to respond to what they're hearing in a similar way to the way you're voting on our presentations today, but to get that feedback through the course of the public sphere. At the end of the day, uh, we ask speakers to continue to blog and respond to additional questions. And at the end of that process, we capture all of the data, the Twitter feed, the blogging, um, the conversations, uh, the live stream, the transcripts of the presentations, the slide shares, and so forth. The next process is quite a, a complicated one because to do justice to the conversation that's just occurred, there's quite a bit of analysis. <coughs> so we do place all of the material that was discussed and spoken about uh, on the web um, to allow people to consider it and come up with a first version of um, uh, a first version of a report and outcome from the public sphere. Uh, the only way to to then allow that to be a truly open process is to place that report on a wiki. Uh, which we do, and then the same community or anyone else who cares to, to participate can go to the wiki and update that, add to it, build on it, and shape the recommendations. The final process, and the, the wiki is open for about a month, 
is to come up with a series of recommendations and then rate them in order of priority. The final document uh, is pulled together and then presented to the minister. Most of, well, all of the three public spheres that we did had a process by which they could um, plug into an existing policy consultation taking place in the government. So in this way, people participating in the public sphere uh, knew very well that there was a, a, an outcome, a purpose, and their time was well spent. Um, some of the observations uh, we made about, well, first of all, let me tell you, we had three of these public sphere events. The first one was on higher bandwidth networks. The second one itself was on Gov 2.0. And the third one was on Australia's ICT and, and creative industries. All of those three public spheres, uh, we have published the event brief as well as the policy brief. So uh, the methodology that we used for the public sphere is, is openly available. Um, I'd like to now make just a couple of observations about the public sphere. The applied use of social media in this way for over a set period of time for a set purpose we think is one of the strengths of the public sphere. Um, by doing it that way, we're asking people to engage in the social networking tools in a way that is, is a defined period of time for a specific purpose. However, the public sphere is not limited to online interaction. You can participate in the public sphere by coming along to the physical event and not doing anything digital at all. Uh, we could also take emails or, or written letters on the topic if people had heard about it. So in this way, it's not exclusively technology-based or online-based, but the online presence makes it uh, far more uh, scalable and I think it builds on its inclusivity by allowing people to follow the event by not being in the room at all through the live stream. The other thing about public sphere that I think is really important is that it is genuinely open. Uh, I think as a politician, taking the risk in having a genuinely open forum was something that agencies and departments were not prepared to do. So by demonstrating that when you do it, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily go bad. In fact, it was very successful. We think it helps um, uh, reduce the risk-averse nature of agencies and departments who might be fearful of using a, an open environment to have a policy conversation with citizens. And thirdly, by being truly co collaborative, we, we felt that the public sphere gave people a sense of ownership of the outcomes in a way that wasn't achievable. Where traditional consultations, governments listen very carefully, but then go away and prepare their, their outcomes uh, without the scrutiny of a, a public process. 